Here's Georgia Southern University. And one Here's of Georgia the Southern things- Georgia Southern University also. Oh, uh, there, there's part of, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty gutsy design, you know, I think. Um, this felt good in my hand. Yeah, the weight on here is really fun. And well. And I, I love the, the leather work that's, that's down here. I mean, this, you, the stitching sticks out a little bit, but if you put it the right way around, it feels great. The retention is, is lovely. And the, the casting in here is really cool. It did, however, let go in a bunch of places up here. So this is, I think, a combination of uh, perhaps ductile or, uh, and steel for the faces which is, again, ductile's a pretty pretty durable material, but it just, in this case, it's just this, the uh, dimensional uh, lattice wasn't up, up to snuff, I think. I yeah, think up, yeah. You know, beefier, it would have been good. We gave this one the award for most intricate casting, and uh, it just could have used a little more uh, strengthening. I yeah, a little to, beefier to in the lattice, and yeah. that's, that's beautiful. So the axe from the University of South Alabama was by far and away the biggest monstrous axe I've ever seen in my whole life. That thing was huge, coming in at something like 15 pounds. Uh, that weight behind it made short work of the rope, that's for sure, but uh, on the edge holding up on the sheet, it did take some dulling. So uh, maybe that edge wasn't as hard as I would have liked to have seen. but. I mean, it's, it's a bruiser, man. Is, nothing's gonna stand in the way of that thing. So this came in from Missouri University of Science and Technology. And uh, just to run off the bat, what you notice is it's, it's an incomplete casting. This, uh, it didn't completely fill the investment mold. And so this is what you have. Now that being said, this is a really interesting attempt. I mean, I'm looking at what would have ended up being a, a light basket handle that is from what is still here feels like it would end up being a really comfortable thing. Uh, the blade shape is, from what's left, it's, it's jaggedy, but I could see where it was going. And so I think that this was a really inspired attempt. Uh, if it had have filled the mold, I'm sure it would have been absolutely glorious. And I'm seeing what's, what's parts of a, of a guard here as well. Um, it's just, it's unfortunate that the, uh, the cast went the way it went. You know, there's, there's cracking on the blade and, and I can see you trying to get, get rid of it by putting a gut hook in. But all that said, I think that this was an inspired attempt. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't fill the mold, but uh, I think you did a, a great, conceptually a really good job of getting this done. All right, Texas Aggies, got your uh, Halligan bar here. I gotta say, it's got a lot of interesting features. You were the only one to ever put a, a spanner right here at this point in the in the forks. The only issue I heard from Andrew was that uh, every city and every block has a different size nut on the top of their uh, on the top of the fire hydrant. So this might help for one or two, but the rest is maybe not. But it was an interesting departure. It's the only one that has that feature, and it looked really cool as well. Your head here <laughs> is beefy in every dimension. Uh, it's got a nice flat impacting space here but not such a flat face that you're gonna to wanna to use to drive this pick home or the ads home. So uh, it's, it's got an interesting look to it. Might have l uh, lacked a little bit in its usefulness um, just because of the shape. But in general, this thing is a beast and would be totally useful to get into somebody's home. This uh, knife came in from the University of Iowa and um, it's, it's, got, it's, it's really heavy. Ooh, this is a heavy knife. Um, the spine is, uh, is likely over a quarter inch thick and the, there isn't really much of a grind. It's, it sort of just starts down here. Um, it looks as if it were essentially uh, as it came out of the mold with a little bit of grinding on top. But uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of this weight could have come off. Uh, the, the clip is kind of short. I mean, if that had to come back to about here, would have made a much more attractive look to it. And, uh, but it's got an interesting recurve to it, and I like that I can see your, your school symbols. In general, I mean, it's got, a, it's got a cool shape to it, and it's really beefy. I think it'll do great in the strength tests. Uh, not sure how it's gonna do in the sharpness tests, but um, we'll give it a try anyway and see, see how it goes. I guess the whole thing is solid, because it's really heavy for a small hammer. This one's a, just, just over five pounds, but 
uh, you, you feel every ounce of that. <laughs> I don't know what about it. Maybe it's because it's small. It's surprising that it's so heavy. But uh, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're seeing some machining at the top here. This was turned in a lathe to get mm -hmm. this uh, little divot up here. Uh, and yeah, it's got a very classic stonemason's shape to it. There's a lot of weight in that handle because it's all one solid piece with a very nice barber uh, uh, twist wrap, I guess. Mm -hmm. There is some indentation from the uh, railroad spikes. You can see a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at this little laser. Yeah, I just laser noticed the laser pattern on there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So there's a little pattern around the edge that we didn't notice until right now, but it's uh, it's really really neat. But uh, yeah, the, the head took a little bit of denting from the railroad spike and uh, a little bit of roughening up from the, the concrete. So it could probably could have been just a little bit harder, um, but yeah, it's it's a it's compact and mighty. Yeah, it was. It did did it hurt on some of those spikes. This blade came in from Lords of the Sword. It's big in every dimension, but it's so thin and there's such a, a large fuller in here that it's light for something this this size. It's really an amazing job in the testing. This thin edge. Took some deformation, but this, I mean, this is almost a chef's knife. And so to take that little amount of damage, hitting into a steel conduit is, is really laudable. Your handle is visually stunning. I like all about it. This is just really big. Um, it doesn't need to be this thick. I think this dimension isn't too, too bad, but it's just got about an extra half inch on its thickness in this dimension. What you guys did that was amazing was a, an amazing, amazing presentation. As you went through the presentation, you were very adept at uh, explaining the level of skills you had, all the different technical processes you were very clear at, concise, and, and it showed all the learning that you've done and that you would be a great team to hire. Even before we swung this thing, we, we decided that, uh, and prophetically so, decided that we wanted to give this one the award of most likely to explode. And it did. It did. <laughs> you can see what happened to it. Uh, the, at all of the fracture points, we see some... Uh, center line shrink. There's a darkness here, which shows that there's probably was a crack already here. Uh, this is probably where this whole failure started. Um, and then it, it just grew from there. I mean, from what I... From what I know of metallurgy, this is a real fine grain. I mean, it, it looks is. like it's strongly made, um, but there are those centerline cracks and some shrinkage that uh, caused an inherent weakness. But I mean, while I was still swinging, this was a fun hammer to swing. I mean, this was really cool. It was it was light. It was fast. It was it was just a good time, and uh, it's just a shame it blew up.